Learn English from the Bible. Genesis 44 Joseph sets a trap. Then Joseph gave a command to the servant in charge of his house. Joseph said, Fill the men's sacks with as much grain as they can carry. And put each man's money into his sack with the grain. Put my silver cup in the sack of the youngest brother. Also put his money for the grain in that sack. The servant did what Joseph told him. At dawn the brothers were sent away with their donkeys. They were not far from the city when Joseph said to the servant in charge of his house, Go after the men. When you catch up with them, say, why have you paid back evil for good? The cup you have stolen is the one my master uses for drinking. And he uses it for explaining dreams. You have done a very wicked thing. So the servant caught up with the brothers. He said to them what Joseph had told him to say. But the brothers said to the servant, Why do you say these things? We would not do anything like that. We brought back to you the money we found in our sacks. We brought it back from the land of Canaan. So surely we would not steal silver or gold from your master's house. If you find that silver cup in the sack of one of us, then let him die. And we will be your slaves. The servant said, We will do as you say. But only the man who has taken the cup will become my slave. The rest of you may go free. Then every brother quickly lowered his sack to the ground and opened it. The servants searched the sacks, going from the oldest brother to the youngest. He found the cup in Benjamin's sack. The brothers tore their clothes to show they were sad. Then they put their sacks back on the donkeys and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers went back to Joseph's house, Joseph was still there. The brothers bowed face down on the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What have you done? Didn't you know that a man like me can learn things by signs and dreams? Judah said, Sir, what can we say? And how can we show we are not guilty? God has uncovered our guilt. So all of us will be your slaves, not just Benjamin. But Joseph said, I will not make you all slaves. Only the man who stole the cup will be my slave. The rest of you may go back safely to your father. Then Judah went to Joseph and said, Sir, please let me speak plainly to you. Please don't be angry with me. I know that you are as powerful as the king of Egypt himself. When we were here before, you asked us, do you have a father or a brother? And we answered you, we have an old father. And we have a younger brother. He was born when our father was old. This youngest son's brother is dead. 
So he is the only one of his mother's children left alive. And our father loves him very much. Then you said to us, bring that brother to me. I want to see him. And we said to you, that young boy cannot leave his father. If he leaves him, his father would die. But you said to us, you must bring your youngest brother. If you don't, you will not be allowed to see me again. So we went back to our father and told him what you had said. Later, our father said, go again. Buy us a little more food. We said to our father, we cannot go without our youngest brother. Without our youngest brother, we will not be allowed to see the governor. Then my father said to us, you know that my wife Rachel gave me two sons. One son left me. I thought, surely he has been torn apart by a wild animal. And I haven't seen him since. Now you want to take this son away from me also. But something terrible might happen to him. Then I would be sad until the day I die. Now what will happen if we go home to our father without our youngest brother? He is the most important thing in our father's life. When our father sees that the young boy is not with us, he will die. And it will be our fault. We will cause the great sorrow that kills our father. I gave my father a guarantee that the young boy would be safe. I said to my father, if I don't bring him back to you, you can blame me all my life. So now, please allow me to stay here and be your slave. And let the young boy go back home with his brothers. I cannot go back to my father if the boy is not with me. I couldn't stand to see my father that sad. Genesis 45 Joseph reveals who he is. Joseph could not control himself in front of his servants any longer. He cried out, Have everyone leave me. When only the brothers were left with Joseph, he told them who he was. Joseph cried so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. And the people in the king's palace heard about it. He said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But the brothers could not answer him, because they were very afraid of him. So Joseph said to them, Come close to me. So the brothers came close to him. And he said to them, I am your brother Joseph. You sold me as a slave to go to Egypt. Now don't be worried. Don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. God sent me here ahead of you to save people's lives. No food has grown on the land for two years now. And there will be five more years without planting or harvest. So God sent me here ahead of you. This was to make sure you have some descendants left on earth. 
and it was to keep you alive in an amazing way. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. God has made me the highest officer of the king of Egypt. I am in charge of his palace. I am the master of all the land of Egypt. So leave quickly and go to my father. Tell him, your son Joseph says, God has made me master over all Egypt. Come down to me quickly. Live in the land of Goshen. You will be near me. Also your children, your grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all that you have will be near me. I will care for you during the next five years of hunger. In this way, you and your family and all that you have will not starve. Now you can see for yourselves. The one speaking to you is really Joseph. And my brother Benjamin can see this. So tell my father about how powerful I have become in Egypt. Tell him about everything you have seen. Now hurry and bring him back to me. Then Joseph hugged his brother Benjamin and cried. And Benjamin cried also. Then Joseph kissed all his brothers. He cried as he hugged them. After this, his brothers talked with him. The king of Egypt and his officers learned that Joseph's brothers had come. And they were very happy about this. So the king said to Joseph, Tell your brothers to load their animals and go back to the land of Canaan. Tell them to bring their father and their families back here to me. I will give them the best land in Egypt. And they will eat the best food we have here. Tell them to take some wagons from Egypt for their children and their wives. And tell them to bring their father back also. Tell them not to worry about bringing any of their things with them. We will give them the best of what we have in Egypt. So the sons of Israel did this. Joseph gave them wagons as the king had ordered. And he gave them food for their trip. He gave each brother a change of clothes. But he gave Benjamin five changes of clothes. And Joseph gave him about seven and one half pounds of silver. Joseph also sent his father ten donkeys loaded with the best things from Egypt. And he sent ten female donkeys. They were loaded with grain, bread and other food for his father on his trip back. Then Joseph told his brothers to go. As they were leaving, he said to them, Don't quarrel on the way home. So the brothers left Egypt and went to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. They told him, Joseph is still alive. He is the ruler over all the land of Egypt. Their father was shocked and did not believe them. But the brothers told him everything Joseph had said. Then Jacob saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him back to Egypt. Now Jacob felt better. 
Jacob, also called Israel, said, Now I believe you. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Genesis 46 Jacob goes to Egypt. So Jacob, also called Israel, took all he had and started his trip. He went to Beersheba. There he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. During the night God spoke to Israel in a vision. He said, Jacob, Jacob. And Jacob answered, Here I am. Then God said, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid to go to Egypt. I will make your descendants a great nation there. I will go to Egypt with you. And I will bring you out of Egypt again. Joseph's own hands will close your eyes when you die. Then Jacob left Beersheba. The sons of Israel loaded their father, their children, and their wives. They put them in the wagons the king of Egypt had sent. They also took their farm animals and everything they had gotten in Canaan. So Jacob went to Egypt with all his descendants. He took his sons and grandsons, his daughters and granddaughters. He took all his family to Egypt with him. Jacob's Family Now these are the names of the children of Israel who went into Egypt. They are Jacob and his descendants. Reuben was Jacob's first son. Reuben's sons were Hanak, Palo, Hezron, and Carmi. Simeon's sons were Jemuel, Jemin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal. Shal was Simeon's son by a Canaanite woman. Levi's sons were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Judah's sons were Er, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Er and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. Perez's sons were Hezron and Hamel. Issachar's sons were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. Zebulun's sons were Seard, Elon, and Yaliel. These are the sons of Leah and Jacob born in northwest Mesopotamia. His daughter Dinah was also born there. There were 33 persons in this part of Jacob's family. Gad's sons were Zephon, Hagi, Shuni, Esben, Eri, Arodi, and Areli. Asher's sons were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah. Their sister was Sarah. Bariah's sons were Heber and Malkiel. These are Jacob's sons by Zilpah. She was the slave girl whom Laban gave to his daughter Leah. There were sixteen persons in this part of Jacob's family. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. Twenty in Egypt, Joseph became the father of Manasseh and Ephraim by his wife Asenaf. She was the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. 
Benjamin's sons were Bella, Becker, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ahai, Rosh, Muppim, Huppim, and Ard. These are the sons of Jacob by his wife Rachel. There were fourteen persons in this part of Jacob's family. Dan's son was Hashem. Naphtali's sons were Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shilam. These are Jacob's sons by Bilha. She was the slave girl whom Laban gave to his daughter Rachel. There were seven persons in this part of Jacob's family. So the total number of Jacob's direct descendants who went to Egypt was 66. The wives of Jacob's sons were not counted in this number. Joseph had two sons born in Egypt. So the total number in the family of Jacob in Egypt was 70. Jacob arrives in Egypt. Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to see Joseph in Goshen. Then Jacob and his people came into the land of Goshen. Joseph prepared his chariot and went to meet his father Israel in Goshen. As soon as Joseph saw his father, he hugged his neck. And he cried there for a long time. Then Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die. I have seen your face. And I know that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and his father's family, I will go and tell the king you are here. I will say, My brothers and my father's family have left the land of Canaan. They have come here to me. They are shepherds and take care of farm animals. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and everything they own with them. When the king calls you, he will ask, What work do you do? This is what you should tell him, We, your servants, have taken care of farm animals all our lives. Our ancestors did the same thing. Then the king will allow you to settle in the land of Goshen. This is away from the Egyptians. They don't like to be near shepherds. Genesis 47 Jacob settles in Goshen. Joseph went into the king and said, My father and my brothers have arrived from Canaan. They have their flocks and herds and everything they own with them. They are now in the land of Goshen. Joseph chose five of his brothers to introduce to the king. The king said to the brothers, What work do you do? And they said to him, We, your servants, are shepherds. Our ancestors were also shepherds. They said to the king, We have come to live in this land. There is no grass in the land of Canaan for our animals to eat. The hunger is very terrible there. So please allow us to live in the land of Goshen. Then the king said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. You may choose any place in Egypt for them to live. Give your father and your brothers the best land. Let them live in the land of Goshen.
and if any of them are skilled shepherds, put them in charge of my sheep and cattle. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and introduced him to the king. And Jacob blessed the king. Then the king said to Jacob, How old are you? Jacob said to him, My life has been spent wandering from place to place. It has been short, filled with trouble. I have lived only 130 years. My ancestors lived much longer than I. Then Jacob blessed the king and left. Joseph obeyed the king. He gave his father and brothers the best land in Egypt. It was near the city of Ramesses. And Joseph gave his father, his brothers and everyone who lived with them the food they needed. Joseph buys land for the king. The hunger became worse, and there was no food anywhere in the land. The land of Egypt and the land of Canaan became very poor because of this. Joseph collected all the money that was to be found in Egypt and Canaan. People paid him this money for the grain they were buying. He brought that money to the king's palace. After some time, the people in Egypt and Canaan had no money left. So they went to Joseph and said, Please give us food. Our money is gone. If we don't eat, we will die here in front of you. Joseph answered, Since you have no money, give me your farm animals. I will give you food in return. So people brought their farm animals to Joseph. And he gave them food in exchange for their horses, sheep, cattle, and donkeys. So he kept them alive by trading food for their farm animals that year. The next year the people came to Joseph and said, You know we have no money left. And all our animals belong to you. We have nothing left except our bodies and our land. Surely both we and our land will die here in front of you. Buy us and our land in exchange for food and we will be slaves to the king together with our land. Give us seed to plant. Then we will live and not die, and the land will not become a desert. So Joseph bought all the land in Egypt for the king. Every Egyptian sold Joseph his field, because the hunger was very great. So the land became the king's. And Joseph made the people slaves from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land he did not buy was the land the priests owned. They did not need to sell their land because the king paid them for their work. So they had money to buy food. Joseph said to the people, Now I have bought you and your land for the king. So I will give you seed. And you can plant your fields. At harvest time you must give one-fifth to the king. You may keep four-fifths for yourselves. Use it as seed for the field and as food for yourselves, your families, and your children. The people said, You have saved our lives. 
If you like, we will become slaves of the king. So Joseph made a law in Egypt, which continues today. One fifth of everything from the land belongs to the king. The only land the king did not get was the priest's land. Don't bury me in Egypt. The Israelites continued to live in the land of Goshen in Egypt. There they got possessions. They had many children and grew in number. Jacob, also called Israel, lived in Egypt 17 years. So he lived to be 147 years old. Israel knew he soon would die. So he called his son Joseph to him. He said to Joseph, If you love me, put your hand under my leg. Promise me you will not bury me in Egypt. When I die, carry me out of Egypt. Bury me where my ancestors are buried. Joseph answered, I will do as you say. Then Jacob said, Promise me. And Joseph promised him that he would do this. Then Israel worshipped as he leaned on the top of his walking stick.